you know, I've briefly spoke extensively about uh, a lot of the concepts that I, one or two concepts rather, that I covered in the email that I actually sent out earlier today. Okay, so if you got the email, you will know what I'm talking about. If not, no need to worry, we'll do a bit of it um, during the course of this session. Okay, now we've spoken extensively regarding a breakup. Okay. And we've also spoken extensively regarding what a trend is. Okay. Now, as those two concepts um, basically line up perfectly with each other, right? which means you can't really trade any sort of breakout methodology without first identifying what the major trend actually is. Okay. You can't look for a breakout and expect to trade it consistently, profitably, without first identifying where the major directional trend is headed, right? So whether it's down or whether it's up or whether it be sideways, the market is not moving, it's not going anywhere, right? Then you can't really make a decision about where you'd like to enter the breakout, either buy or sell. Okay, so whatever, sort of breakout methodology or breakout entry rather that you're looking for it has to be accompanied by first and foremost identifying where the major trend actually is okay all right so let me grab my spotlight tool so we can work with it okay so now if we're looking here we're looking at a billion dollar us dollar um, on the four hour just as an example, okay, let's drop down or let's uh, move up rather to the daily time frame. Okay. Now, two weeks ago, we discussed the importance of sticking to some of the um, more, I can say, higher time frames when it comes to doing analysis or rather breaking down the market from the higher time frame just to get a better sense of what the bigger picture actually is. Okay, because if you do look at let's say the 15 minute time frame. Okay. So if you're looking at the 15 minute time frame, it might give you a really different perspective as would the D1 time frame, the daily time frame. Now, for me, okay, and the way that I do things and the way I, that I was taught, um, the larger time frame obviously does hold a bit more weight when it comes to directional bias. So if on the smaller time frames on the 15 minute to 30 minute to one hour time frame, you have a downward trend, okay? And on the daily of four hour and weekly, you have a very bullish tone in your market, okay? Bullish basically being up, then you are more likely to follow what the longer term time period, okay? So the longer term time horizons, which will be your daily, the four hour, your weekly, as well as your monthly, what those time frames actually are showing. Okay. And then your smaller time frames, right? Your shorter time horizons, those are used specifically to help you out to figure out where the optimum entry actually could be. Okay. And so I won't go over time frames again. If you want that, you can go through to the past videos on the channel. I did upload and send through the links for the past thing, two weeks or so about how to actually use the time frames and not to get yourself confused by trying to make every single time frame align by looking at the daily and thinking it's gonna align with them one hour and also the 30 minute time frame. Okay, that is a recipe for disaster because you're never gonna get all time frames to align and give you the same sort of um, um, signal, okay, whether it be short or long. Now looking at a breakout on a daily time frame as opposed to looking at a breakout on a four hour as well as a one hour or 15 minute time frame is basically going to have the same sort of principle okay now we'd like to see some resistance at that particular level okay let's just take for example this 69 even level okay 0.69 even seems like a really good structure okay 
good support level mark or the price rather rejected at this point previously and rejected again extended a bit lower to reach that 68.50 zone and pushed up and then finally broke below it and the market came near miss of that zone but came back i think two months later to tag that level and extend it just slightly and pull back in to that 6800 zone okay so technically speaking okay so so this is an area of interest okay so when the market goes into that particular zone that would be an area of interest now as i've always said if you're looking at a a breakout scenario right now the market as you guys should know by now because i repeat this so much that the market in most cases most of the time it will be moving sideways okay the market doesn't trend most of the time the market moves sideways most of the time okay if you don't believe me you can do your own back testing and research on that which is obviously what i prefer you guys to do and you'll be able to see that the market doesn't go one direction most of the time about 30 percent of the time you might get a unidirectional swing but about 70 percent of the time the market will just be ranging sideways okay, as you can see here there'll be no clear directional bias so this entire month okay this is one full month the market didn't have any particular directional bias and it pushed up one two three four five days and moved sideways about one two three four five six seven days and then pushed down again one two three days and then started to push sideways another five or six more days so as you can see the market will not particularly move in any singular direction in any uni um direction make any unidirectional swing however it will range and move sideways due to the nature of breakout trade okay now you can see by these spikes at the lower ends of the ranges that we do have a lot of false breakouts in markets which is prevalent obviously because of um the increase in people trading breakouts okay all right because the breakout is one of the most um, simple methodologies you can actually trade right so trading a breakout is very simple okay you don't need to do um, tons and tons of tricky analysis and add all these fancy indicators that people like to add right it's very simple and if done correctly it can be incredibly profitable okay so if you're looking at the um, the market from that perspective realizing that a large percentage of the time the market will be moving sideways let me just move this okay let me try to move that okay so if we take it from that perspective then we understand that there's going to be a lot of times where the market will give us an entry okay will give us some sort of an entry signal and then not go in the direction that we intended it to go Okay. or we had hoped the market to go which is why we wait for a signal to confirm the actual entry itself okay now if you were trading a purely breakout safe sort of methodology which was the lazy extremely lazy way of trading a breakout this would have been your sell area okay because there is a swing low right? there's also a swing low as well and the market you'd probably have a sell stop just below this this area over here and the market would have triggered that sell stop and had it in the opposite direction which is what happens to a lot of traders whether it be retail or institutional traders as well but at some in most cases you can avoid having this type of situation by going for the clear breakout situations or breakout scenarios meaning 
Okay, let me just clear everything here. And let's use a smaller time frame because we just want to see. Okay. And so let's use this breakout as an example. Right. So you have a previous support or resistance structure. Let me grab my spotlight side. Okay, now we've um, isolated, I think it was 6,800 previously. So we have this 6,800, which was a previous resistance level okay the price rejected aggressively previously at that level okay so there is a possibility that the price will do more more or less the same thing if the trend obviously lines up that was an area where institutional traders and just retail traders there was a frenzy of selling at this area previously and therefore that looks like a price level where there could be some potential action in the future there. Okay, that's the simplest way that we can actually look at it, is area where there was previous buying from, okay, could be an area of future selling. The market rejected, made the swing to the downside, and then pushed up aggressively, broke above, the swing high point and then came back in. So let's just remove that so we can get the swing high here. Make sure that this is right. So there's that swing high. The market broke above. Okay. Made a rally. All right. Now what you have to understand at this particular point in time is that if there is an area where there was previous selling and the market just sort of like blasts through that level and comes back, there is a very likely, um, okay, it is very likely rather that there will be another aggressive buy up at that particular area. Okay, so you can see that we've drawn this horizontal line on the four hour time frame. Okay. If you drop down to the one hour time frame, okay, just remove. Okay, let me just draw it differently. All right, let me just use the MT4 trend line rather. Okay. All right. Okay, so now let's drop down to the one hour. Boom. Okay, so there's a one hour. We can see that the price actually went through right in this area over here. But if we drop down to just one of the lower levels or the lower price level, we're more likely to actually see some sort of resistance at that area. Okay, so some sort of come getting to the market. The market is gonna be moving down at this point in time or at this area. Let me just move back then. Like we're on the 15 minutes. Let's try to move back to make sure if I'm doing anything. I can't seem to find this. Okay, there's my horizontal line, right? There's my yellow line. Okay, guys, I'm not sure what's going on. Let me just zoom out. All right, so we have this previous high. Let me just get one hour. 
okay, you have this previous high and the market broke above it very convincingly. Okay, but if you were to take a look on the lower time frame, okay, not sure why am I empty for this keeps going to, to the beginning. Uh, there we go. Right, so if you were to look a breakdown into the lower time frame, you'll see a bit of selling at that area. Okay, there's going to be some selling at the area. Sometimes there might be a candle that moves like this. Okay, you might even get 10, 15, 20 pips worth of drop to the downside, and then the market will break above aggressively and then come in to retest the area and then take off. Right. Now, what you have to understand is that there is an exchange of hands, right? There's an exchange of hands or contracts, whatever you want to call it, at every single price point. There's someone buying, there's someone selling. That's what you need to understand when it comes to how the market basically moves. Okay. The market doesn't move if no one is buying and no one is selling. All right. The market will be stagnant. There needs to be a buyer and it needs to be a seller at price points. So if there's a buyer and there's a seller, the market will move. And if there is an aggressive buyer at a particular price level that outweighs the selling, right? Then the market or the price rather will actually move higher. So what this basically tells us from this swing high point over here, this is a previous swing high level, okay, or swing high point or whatever you want to call it. Most likely, there will be a rejection at this area. Okay, now, the best or the most optimum area that you want to get into or the, the, the best time you want to get into is that first touch above that break of that swing higher or that swing low. You don't want to get into a market that has been doing this, okay? You don't want the market that's been doing this. And then you just wanna enter here at this point in time. You want something that's fresh, something that looks a bit like this. Right? It's not always gonna be identical to this, but if it plays by these rules, then you have the actual advantage in that you're dictating when to get into the market and how you get into the market, right? You're not letting the market pull you into trade. So the last thing you wanna do is to let the market pull you into a trade by showing you this and you're like, this, I saw this yesterday and it worked out. So I'm just gonna try it and, and see if it's gonna work today. That's the market pulling you into different types of trading systems and different types of strategies and all of that stuff. You just want to stick to one sort of methodology, make sure that works. And once you start being consistent there, then you can start branching out and adding on whatever you want to add on. But in the beginning, you want to keep the market simple or you want to keep your, your trading very, very, very simple. Okay, I say this all the time. Anything you want to do when it comes to trading, you want to keep it very, very simple. So the more complex it is, the more time you're going to spend doing analysis, and the more time you're going to spend doing analysis, the more you're not going to want to do analysis. All right. And probably the more you're going to miss out on opportunities. Because I know people who would sit, used to sit for 12 hours, 10 hours a day doing analysis or doing what they feel like is analysis and the trade will still go in the opposite direction. All right, so you just wanna keep your trading very simple, All right? Um, make sure that the trades are very clear, concise, there's no gray areas. It's either a black or it's a white. So that's the whole focus. That's what we're gonna be continuing with, All right? If you've missed a couple of the sessions, guys, you can just go back to the YouTube channel and just watch some of the videos, just go through back on the Telegram channel. All right. 
and in sequence sort of like watch all these videos from there. So as I was saying then, so this swing high point sort of like gives us a hint that if the market breaks above this swing high point with an aggressive move, we'd like to see the market pull back in and then that's an area of interest for us. It doesn't mean that the market breaks above and then jumps back to that area, then all of a sudden we're actually buying. Okay. We like to see what we call or we term as a rejection candle. But right? we've done countless, countless sessions on what a rejection candle basically looks like. But if okay, let me just zoom in. But in its basic form, a rejection candle will look something like this long wicks to the downside right and the body on the upside okay relatively very little or no wicks on the upper side or shadow so it would be more evident on the four hour time frame as well you can see that the mark for the price drop down boom the market keeps rejecting this price area over here by that i mean it doesn't close below this yellow line that we actually highlighted. Now that is the market rejecting a price level because if it does come in and close aggressively below that level, it, that means that the actual buying power that we anticipated at this area is not as strong as we thought it would be. And therefore it doesn't warrant us to consider this as a potential buy area. Okay. And in that case, sometimes you might just leave this market alone, or you might just highlight the next area and wait for the price to come in and reject around that area over there. Okay. Just making an example, this is a very bad one, but that's normally what you want to do or what you'd want to see within the market. Okay. All right, do you guys have any questions? Okay, for the guys who were a bit late, what you guys can do is wait for the recording to be uploaded onto the Telegram, onto the YouTube channel, right? I just upload it there and list it and then send through the link on the Telegram channel and you can just basically watch that from there. And Tomorrow's session obviously is going to start around the same time, 7 p.m. And that's going to be a bit more basic. Although tonight's session wasn't that advanced, okay? Because I do realize that there's some guys coming in from the beginner session who actually just joined um, the advanced session um, for the first time. So we don't want to just leave everyone behind or most of the guys behind, but. Um, and I just, and I also want to cater for some of the more advanced guys. So what I'll do, I will be uploading one of the previous videos we did quite a while back. Right? And I'll send through the link for the YouTube um, video on the Telegram channel. So you can just watch that if you felt like you wanted something a bit more advanced. But like I usually say, guys, I mean, the simpler your trading is, the easier it's going to be to execute. And I can tell you from my end, my the best trades, my best trades have always been the easiest trade. They've been like, okay, you just look at the market and like, okay, all right, this is going down, and then boom, you go short, right? Depending obviously on how much um, equity you have in your account, you're like, boom, right? Market drops. Those are the easy, the painless, the stress-free trades. But the ones that you do a lot of work in, you analyze, you do all of this, and then, you know, it's sort of like you're forcing the market to do something that you want it to do, rather than just doing your analysis, right? One so very simple, straightforward, the market can either go up or it can go down. Right? You don't have one million outcome. So just make sure that you try and keep things as simple as humanly possible, right? I'll keep 
reiterating that over and over again, as I have been doing for the past couple of months. But I feel like it's a concept that we tend to forget very easily and we get sucked into all these other fancy things that we want to add on to our job. Yeah. So um, I think that is our time. I will be just doing the session with some of the other members, right? Guys, coffee training and stuff like that. Uh, in about five minutes time. So I'll send through the video. You guys can take a look at that. And I did post through the session or regarding the trading competition. Okay, um, I got some funds. I think about a thousand dollars, not a lot. So I got about a thousand dollars that um, we'll be putting up as prize money for the competition. Um, it won't be strictly based off how much money you can make, but I will surprise everyone. I think I think it's better if I just surprise everyone about what's going to be sort of like the qualifying criteria for whoever wins first, second, or third prize. But if you know me, you know I'm all about um, risk-adjusted returns, meaning it, it's easy to make 100% each day or 10% or 50% of your money each day if you risk 100% of your account. So I'm, I'm not too focused on that. I'm more about sort of like risk adjusted return and actual performance. So, but I will send through some details via email to everyone. If you don't have, if I don't have your email address, just send it through to me on uh, WhatsApp. And send it through to me on WhatsApp and I'll add you to the list and I'll send you through the details regarding the competition. Okay, anyone can enter, new guys, some of the older guys, demo trading, live trading, doesn't really matter. Okay, so I will see you guys tomorrow at 7 p.m. I'll send through the recording of this video after the session and I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your evening and I'll share the PDFs again. For some of the newer guys, I'll share the PDFs again on the Telegram channel. Just look for them and about 20 or 30 minutes from now. Okay. All right, guys.